quilt people. I'm looking fly in my new tank top. Oh yeah. <laughs> I promise no singing or rapping today. Okay. Um, so what we're working on today is a continuation of what we did yesterday because yesterday I was like, what do I do? How am I doing this? Um, so I found a few solutions that I think are pretty cool. Um, especially with working for, with a material like a woven, which this gauze material, um, it's a very loose woven, right? And so when you're working with those types of materials, um, there's special attention that has to be paid to that because of its, you know, properties of kind of pulling apart, right? Um, so let me show you the two options I came up with. And again, if you're ever doing this type of thing, uh, where, you know, you just can't quite pattern it, um, but you want to create either a template or another way to do it, this could be, um, an option for you. All right. And it's, it's certainly working for me at this point, as you can see, I'm kind of on the last quadrant there <laughs> of, uh, of the first round of cl clouds though before, um, so that's kind of where I am. Let me show you what I've kind of figured out that's working for me. So I want to put more continuation of this kind of, you know, rolling in clouds where it meets the ground, right? And so I have this template now that I'm kind of excited about that I feel is going to go in here. It has kind of that same similar shape, right, of this kind of arching in. Uh, so I'm going to be putting this one probably, you know, down here somewhere. Um, and then kind of filling it in with other information as well. Um, so I'm going to be working with this little piece, right? Just to kind of show you how to do it. And I'm finding that the plastic template, um, certainly is a good way to start. Um, but then I've also discovered another way that I'll show you as well. So we'll just, we'll, uh, do the plastic template first and then, uh, the other, uh, that has sewn edges and then rolling it. Okay. All right. Check this out. So I have my template here and I'm just going to grab some 505 and very lightly because it's gauzy and it's going to pull apart. I don't want to use too much of this. So just very lightly spray it on the front side. Okay. Now this again is the front side up. And so I'm going to grab this piece here and see how much coverage I can get uh, down along here and just get that the plastic template covered okay so now I have essentially one piece to work with and what I'm going to do next is take it to the cutting board turn it over and cut the excess off uh, leaving essentially about a half an inch around the template okay all right this is just going to be cut out pretty loosely around here just to get a rough shape of so I don't have too much excess as I'm folding it over same for down here okay now we I have a couple of these deep insets here um, and so I'm going to cut up into that so that on either side I can right get that action going okay all right then on my lap ironing board just to kind of save my table a little bit same thing just a little light 505 on the edge and then i have my handy dent do you have this thing it's a sewing all i think it's so cool i just anyways it's my favorite tool for doing this type of work right to just kind of pull this back over the template and because i did 505 on this side as well I am not even having to hold it down, right? The glue is doing the hard work for me. Let me just cut this in here. All right? And so that'll hold it in place for me. And now I'll go through and put a little starch on the edge and then iron it for a nice crisp finish. Oh, it's a little too much excess here. All right, get that out of the way and then just finish doing this around. Okay, let me finish this up and then we'll continue on. All right, so I have kind of pulled that over the edge of the template, all right? And I'm kind of getting a decent shape here. I'm gonna have to work with these tiny little ends a little bit, but I'm not too concerned with that. I've certainly done more tricky things in my life. <laughs> 
kind of hold it there with that. Okay, now, um, you've probably all seen me do this before where I get um, just a little bit of spray starch in my container here, right? And then just brush the edges of that, right? And then create a nice crisp edge with your craft iron. And then just get a really hard crease right there along the edge. Now, because of this material, I don't want to press too hard, especially in the middle, because I want to retain these kind of wavy lines. Um, so just be mindful of that. The other thing is note that your fabric is, whether it's directional or not, and then also be mindful of whether you're going to, once you do it on the template, what side you're doing it on so that the right, the correct side that you want done is in fact up and that you're not reversing the image. It's really easy to reverse the image when you're working with templates like this, okay? So I'm just gonna go through and again, just wet the very edge of this, some spray starch and get those done. Okay, so I'm gonna continue working on this to get that nice crisp edge, and then I'll show you what it looks like when we take the template out from underneath there. Okay, so I have the edges done, and I'm ready to take the template out. Now, I didn't get too hung up on these little tiny bits and edges, okay? So I'm gonna fix that, um, and I know I need to fix that once I get that done, but now, this is such a loose weave, it's, it's, I gotta be careful here taking this out, that um, it doesn't, the, the material itself doesn't actually fray and pull apart. So let me just go through and pick this out and liberate the fabric from the template. I don't have to be too, too careful, especially if I'm working with something that's not a loose weave, because the, uh, um, crease that I created with the starch will still be there and it's, it's easy to fold back over. All right, so let me just get this out and then we'll um, put those hard creases back in. That is now successfully been removed and so I'm just going to go through and fold those on the creases and then reset them now that the template is out. All right, just all the way around. Okay, and as I'm doing that, just to ensure that once I've done this, it does in fact stay in place, I'm gonna pin it, right? Just to hold it until I have the opportunity to sew it down just along the perimeter after I've ironed it. Okay, so I'm gonna do that all the way around. Okay, tricky spot, right? Coming into the cleavage of this cut, what I'm going to do is rather, like on this side, I've just been turning and pinning, right? But because that this gets right down to the edge of the fabric, what I'm gonna to wanna to do is flip it over. So now it's um, face down and then kind of do the same thing with a little 505 that I did before so that I can essentially finger roll it, right? Right here and tack it down in the same manner that I did when it, the template was there. So this way I know, because once you get into the very, you know, kind of crux of this cut in, right, it gets down to like just one thread that you're able to turn, okay? And so then this way I have a little more control over what's happening there and as I finger roll it, right, or finger press it, then it just stays in place because I put the 505 there. Okay. I now have my Franken quilt piece. <laughs> it's just being held together with all these pins. And so now I'm gonna take it over to the machine and just with a hopping foot, right, just kind of tack these down along the edges, removing the pins as I go. I'll show you how I do that. Free motion quilting foot is on the machine. Right, and so I'm just, now I have to be careful with this because it's such a loose gauze that if I pull it or stretch it and then try and put it back together, it's not gonna be good. So I have to carefully kind of pull it through and just go slowly, right, as I go along the edge.
the end result is essentially a pretty crisp edge because I have used the starch already, right? Um, and then just sewing it down lightly along that edge just gives me enough of a structure to be able to work with. Now, you can see because of the loose weave, right? Kind of how, where I have stretched it a bit too much as I was pulling it through the machine. And that gives me those kind of, it, well, it just makes it looser, right? It's not uh, more precise. So you do have to be careful about that if you're using a fabric like this. But I'm really happy with it and the way that it's looking. And so now I could kind of tack it up there and it'll be a lot easier to work with moving forward. Then the other technique that I kind of came up with that it seems to be working for me, especially on smaller areas and things like this, like let's say that I want to create this kind of into, you know, a piece that's going to be added into the clouds. So the same way that I did yesterday, creating those dots, right, kind of just as a guide to help direct me to the shape that I'm wanting, all right, and so what I'm going to do essentially from there is sew just a little bit beyond these dots that I just created. And then from there, once I have that seam in there, it's going to be a lot easier to grab that and then turn it. Okay, let me just show you really quick. All right, so I have my blue dots on there and I'm going to go around and just again with my free motion hopping foot, I'm going to just sew slightly beyond these blue dots. All right, check it. I have sewn just along past the, right, past the blue dots, right? Now I'm gonna take it to the ironing board and turn it and then do the same process in terms of ironing it down, all right? But this first step really gives you a lot more to grab onto and it also makes it a lot more solid, like feeling, whereas this you know, edge is just kind of like gauzy and loose and whatever else. Putting this first pass of stitches through it um, kind of seals that up a little bit and gives you, again, something more to grab onto uh, and then turn. All right, so then just with a little bit of starch around the perimeter. I'm going to turn this down to the blue dots now that they've mostly disappeared from the starch, which is both good and bad. <laughs> All right, and then again, just keep going down and turning it and you'll find that that should be enough. But then you'll also have to top stitch this, right? All the way around. Okay, but that's giving me enough to kind of hold on to and, and get it turned more solidly. Okay, so that was the second kind of technique that I came up with yesterday. The advantage of not really knowing what you're doing, you get to just <laughs> experiment and play. <laughs> All right. So you can see how essentially that works the same, right? But again, now that that's done the first time, I am gonna go um, and stitch it the second time just with a, stop, a top stitch all the way around, okay? I think I should stop saying I don't know what I'm doing and change it to you don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> It's just to clarify, like, that's the beauty of art, right? Like, there's no necessarily right or wrong way so long as you achieve your objective. And these are just things that I'm finding as I discover and go through, you know, my artistic process that I'm more than happy to share with you. I hope that you think it's fun and that you maybe learn something, maybe a new approach, new technique. But uh, anyways, that's uh, what I've got going on today. I hope you have a beautiful quilty day. As always, you can reach me at quiltingcowboy at gmail.com or just head over to my website, quiltingcowboy.com. All right, talk to you soon. Bye.